Hi everyone, in this problem we have to find the intervals where the graph of this function is concave up and also where it's concave down. So to do that, the very first step in this problem is to take the second derivative and set it equal to zero and solve for x. Also, if there's any issues with the domain of this function, we need to make note of those here as well. You'll notice that this function uh, is never undefined. Uh, the bottom piece, x squared plus 12, this can never be equal to zero because x squared is always positive or zero and 12 is positive. So when you add something that is positive or zero to a positive number, it can never be zero. Also, if you try to solve this for x, you end up getting the square root of a negative number. So you end up getting i's. So the bottom will never be equal to zero, so there's no issues with the domain. All right, so let's talk about taking the derivative. So to do that, we could use the quotient rule. However, whenever you have a constant in the numerator like this, there's a better way. What you can do is you can take the bottom piece and you can bring it up. So you can think of this as being raised to the first power. And then so you do this, 14 x squared plus 12 to the negative one. This is super useful. And again, whenever you have a fraction like this and you have a number up top, this is the strategy you wanna take. If you have like a 14 x up here, game over, just, just use the quotient rule. Um, okay, so f prime of x, it's only when you have a constant that you should take this approach. Um, so here we're gonna use the chain rule. So you bring down the negative one. So you have negative 14 parentheses x squared plus 12. You leave the inside untouched. This is the inside piece. Subtract one, so that's minus two. And then times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x squared is 2x and the derivative of 12 is zero, so we just get 2x. So we just use the chain rule. We brought down the negative one. We left the inside piece untouched. Subtracted one, that gave us the negative two. Then times the derivative of the inside. Let's go ahead and multiply the two x with the negative 14. So f prime of x is equal to negative 28x. And we can take this piece and bring it down. So we'll have x squared plus 12 squared. All right, good stuff. So now uh, we have to take the derivative again. So this is a really good example because now you see you have a 28x. So you could do the same thing and bring this up, but it's a terrible idea. The reason is we have to set this equal to zero and solve. So it'll make it much harder. So in general, it's easier for most people to just take the derivative again. Let's use the quotient rule. Recall the quotient rule says, if you have f over g and you take the derivative, it's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom one squared. That's what we'll use here. So f prime of x, I know it's a little confusing because we have you know an f here and an f here. Think of it as top and bottom. So it's the derivative of the top, which will be negative 28 times the bottom. So x squared plus 12 squared minus the top, so negative 28x times the derivative of the bottom. So we'll bring down the two. We have x squared plus 12 to the first power times the derivative of the inside. And it's all being divided by all of this by the bottom one squared. So when you square the bottom one, you'll get x squared plus 12 squared squared, so it'll be to the fourth. Let's double check that. It's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which looks okay, we use the chain rule there, all over the bottom one squared. I'm gonna do one little simplification. Oops, this is f double prime. Whoops, glad I caught that. f double prime of x is equal to, I'm just gonna uh, multiply these numbers here, the two x, the two, and the 28x. I'm gonna multiply this. I don't, I, I don't wanna do too much in one step. So 
negative 28 x squared plus 12 squared. So negative and negative is going to give us a positive, so plus. The 28 uh, times 4 is going to be, I believe it's 112, because um, 28 times 2 is 56, and then 56 times 2 is uh, 112. So plus 112. And then x times x is, is x squared. This is a very uh, common thing that happens, by the way. And then we have the x squared plus 12. This type of problem is very typical in calculus. That's all being divided by x squared plus 12 to the fourth power. And again, no domain issues. x squared plus 12 is always positive. So the bottom will never be 0. Now we set this equal to 0. All right, let's keep going. So this is f double prime of x. So now we're going to factor. So it looks like we can factor out a negative 28 as well as an x squared plus 12. I'm going to factor that out. I'll use a bracket here. So here, let's see, what, what, what needs to go here so that when we multiply it by this, we get what's up here. So we've already got the negative 28. We've already got an x squared plus 12. We just need another copy of x squared plus 12 because x squared plus 12 times x squared plus 12 is x squared plus 12 squared, right? So, and then we pulled out a negative 28 from this. So it's going to give us a neg and an x squared plus 12. So that leaves us with negative 4x squared, I believe. Let me just double check that. So negative 4 times negative 28 is going to give us a positive 112. Yep, and then, yep, we already have this piece, and then this has the x squared. So it looks, looks okay. x squared plus 12 to the fourth is a different color here. So if you take this and you multiply it by this, you'll get, you'll get this, right? You'll have the x squared plus 12, you'll have the x squared, and the negative 4 and the negative 28 will give you um, the positive 112. And this is equal to 0. Hardcore problem. It's really good, though. F double prime of x. Let's keep going. So these cancel. So that's going to become a 3. So we'll have negative 28, parentheses, x squared minus 4x squared is going to give us a minus 3x squared. And this is plus 12. Okay, and it's all being divided by x squared plus 12 cubed. Just really a lot of algebra. I mean, there is some calculus, right, like the quotient rule, but it's really like some really hardcore, like factoring, and just really, really careful. All right, um, so we have a fraction. Um, it's never undefined. So all we do is whenever you have a fraction equal to 0, you can automatically set the numerator equal to 0. The reason is, um, let me do it over here. We basically have this, negative 28, negative 3x squared plus 12 over x squared plus 12 cubed. And this is equal to 0. So whenever you have something like this, what you can do is you can multiply both sides by the bottom like this. Okay, like this, x squared plus 12 cubed. I usually don't do this, so I'm doing it on the side. And then look what happens. You end up with the top piece equal to zero, right? Because zero times anything is zero. So whenever you have a fraction equal to zero, you can automatically just set the numerator equal to zero. So therefore, the numerator is equal to zero. If you, now you can divide by negative 28. That's an implication arrow. So you set this equal to zero. Subtract 12. It's going kind of fast. I realize this video is already nine minutes. <laughs> Divide by negative 3. Take the square root. Hurrah! We have two possible points of interest, plus or minus 2. All right, so that was a lot of work um, just to take the derivative. So now we have to take these numbers and um, put them on a number line. So let's go ahead and do that. So step 2 is to make what's called a sine diagram. So sine diagram. For, for f double prime. And that basically means you take these numbers here and any possible points of interest, vertical asymptotes, stuff like that, 
and you plot them on a number line. So here we have negative two and two. And now we pick test points. So in this case, we need three test points. We need a test point over here, we need one over here, and we need one over here. And we plug them into the second derivative. If the result is positive, it's concave up. If it's negative, it's concave down. So let's pick easy numbers. How about like negative three? So f, I'll do it over here, f double prime of negative three. That's a nice number that's over here on the left. Definitely gonna use a calculator for this. This is negative 28, negative three, negative three squared plus 12. I guess you don't need a calculator actually. Um, this is negative three squared plus 12 cubed. Okay, so this is gonna be negative 28. Um, negative three times nine is negative 27 plus 12. And on the bottom we have nine plus 12 cubed. And again, you can just put it into your calculator. Um, this is going to be positive because this will be equal to negative 28 times negative 15. And then let's see, nine plus 12 is 21 cubed. So that's positive because negative and negative is positive. So here it's going to be, I shouldn't have written those arrows there. Here it's going to be concave up. I usually put the thing up here. So concave up, there we go. <laughs> How about a number between uh, negative two and two? <laughs> Let's try zero. So F double prime of zero. Much easier number. Negative 28, negative three times zero squared plus 12, all divided by um, zero squared plus 12 cubed. That'll be negative 28. Uh, this piece here is zero, so this will be 12. And on the bottom here we have 12 cubed. That'll be negative, so here it's concave down, right, concave down. And last but not least, F double prime of two, of three, let's do three. Can't use two, two is uh, one of these numbers, right? You wanna use a number over here. Um, it's gonna be the same uh, as this one, I believe, because see, all the X's are being squared. So when you square the three, it's gonna be the same thing. Um, so it should be uh, positive, but I'll, I'll, I'll work it out. Negative 28, negative three, three squared plus 12, all over uh, three squared plus 12 cubed. So it'll be negative 28, uh, negative 27 plus 12. Yep, look, exact same thing. Worth doing it just so you see it. Nine plus 12 cubed. And that's positive, right? Just like before, right? We, it's the same expression we have up here, right? So it'll be, it'll be positive. Um, so it's concave up. All right, so now we can write our answers. So it'll be con up, let's put con up, concave up uh, over here from negative infinity to negative two. And also from two to infinity. What a ridiculously long problem, wow. <laughs> and con down, uh, from negative two to two. Honestly, uh, I think these are the longest ones, you know, the ones that involve um, rational functions because you have to use the quotient rule, right? So it, it took uh, a little bit longer. But yeah, so um, that's it. So basically you, you take the derivative twice and that took pretty much almost the entire problem. And you set it equal to zero and you solve. So there's some tricky factoring and you get two answers two and negative two, you put those on a number line, you pick test points, plug them into the second derivative. If the second derivative is positive, it's concave up. If it's negative, it's concave down. Once you can do one of these on your own, uh, you, pretty much, you pretty much got it. They're all pretty much the same. Like the factoring is the same. It's the same idea every time. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.